What is happening, YouTube? Larry McKeaton here representing Formula Golf. I'm out here at Steel Canyon Golf Club, my home track. About to tee off, play a quick nine on the ranch side. Figured I'd do a little course vlog, give you guys an update of everything that's going on in my life because I got a big announcement coming up. So, anyways, we'll, we'll get on with that after I hit this shot. First hole, par four, pretty short, about 370 yards or so to the pin from down here. It's downhill left to right. Been hitting driver a lot in this hole because I can get really, really close. Especially now that I have my new TaylorMade M6. This is going to be my second round with this thing. Uh, I got the the Mitsubishi Tensei uh, CK Series shaft. So it's the red that gets the most spin because I'm already a low spin player, and these are really low spin drivers. So I got a spinnier shaft, 60x. You know, changing things up a little bit. It's been pretty good, pretty deep so far. So I'm going to get this thing going. Nice and high, nice and straight. It's soft, it just got done raining, so it should be right in the fairway. All right, I got 53 yards. Kind of an awkward little distance, but uh, it's something I've been working on a lot lately. Uh, really trying to dial these little wedge shots in. Um, but the way I'm doing them is by making sure that my arms don't move away from my body as I turn. Especially with all my clubs, the, the longer it, the club is, the harder it is for me to get this club going almost straight down and then turning. I was just recently at the Farmers Insurance Open and I have a bunch of swings of a lot of really good players who all do that. They, especially Justin Rose and Tiger. Their arms when they get up here are coming down and it gets in that magical spot that's like probably right around here where the club is almost looking at the ball and then they just turn and the club never really turns over. It looks super pretty. Guys who hit like draws a lot tend to have the, the, their arms going out more. So this would really help somebody trying to limit that draw or even hit a cut. I'm gonna do a video on it actually uh, on the range where I can give you guys three different little tips on how to do that using everyday items that are around the golf course. And one that's maybe not so conventional, but we'll get save that for the next video after this vlog. So I'm going to try to hit that shot the exact way. Just get here have it come down. I just recently saw a video of Pete Cowan working with Hendrick Stenson where he was taking it back to here, grabbing the club kind of in the center of the shaft, turning back up, and then this was the feeling he was rehearsing. Something I've been working on a lot. Looks pretty good. Maybe a little too long. No, that's going to be okay. It's probably a little bit long, maybe maybe seven feet or so, but that was quality, uh, quality hit. Good flight. All right, walking on up. It is a little long, maybe maybe 10 feet. I think it's going to be a pretty tricky putt. There's a little knob just to the right of this hole that it's going to really spit this bad boy to the left. say about 10 feet or so is decent. I mean, the distance control is always an important thing, but at least the line was pretty good. This is going to be one of those putts where that's really going to break as it loses speed. So I'm going to play this kind of high and let the hill kind of do the work. on my line oh that was sweet there all right good start before we go to the next hole I want to tell you guys what's going on in my life right now it's been a pretty crazy last week and a half or so uh, one thing that was pretty bad maybe like the worst possible thing that could happen and another thing that was incredibly good and something I never would have foreseen actually happening so the golf gods give and take and hopefully this is a bigger gift than what it took so I'm going to 
leave it up the chance for what I want to tell you first. So I got a Steel Canyon button here. White for the good news, red for the bad news. Let's give it a flip and leave the chance. Ooh, started with the red. Okay, so here's the bad news. So about a week and a half ago, um, my sponsor, my sponsor owns a real estate brokerage down here in California, and uh, he had a major thing happen in his company. Uh, his escrow officer wired a hundred thousand dollars into a fraudulent account, and he had to pay that hundred thousand dollars back out of his own pocket. So he had that's basically all of the extra money that he had. And so he uh, had to dive into all these little extra accounts that he hasn't been using. And unfortunately, he had to dive into my golf account and pretty much gutted it. Uh, it was probably, you know, one of the worst possible things that could happen, especially since it's something that I didn't do. Uh, I finished off last year making some money to put more into the pot. So I was really excited for this year, as you can tell by my last video that I had. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I was broke. I, I was basically done. I, I didn't know what I was gonna do. I I have a little bit left, just not much. A little, maybe like 700 bucks or something. That I was like, well, I better make that work. So uh, pretty pretty unfortunate. Lost thousands of dollars towards my golf career. But that is the bad news that happened about a week and a half ago. And after I tee off on the next hole, I will get to the good news. Okay, hole two is 380 yards. That's if the tees are way farther back on this tee box and without the dog leg. From about from here, you've probably seen this in the past on some of my videos where I, I take it over the the rocks there and I can get on the green. It's about a 290 yard carry. There's no wind today and it's pretty dang cold. So it's gonna take all I can to get it there. But hopefully my sweet M6 does the job. So I just wanna make sure that my hands stay fast in front of my body so I don't bail out to the right, which is not a bad thing in this hole, but I, I like to try to really nut up and avoid the bailout. That one was hit hard. I think that's gonna be pretty good. I don't think that swing didn't feel necessarily great, but that flight was pretty nice. All right, looks like I came up about 15 yards short into the rough here. So there is a chance it could have landed. Oh, that actually looks like my divot. And then it probably rolled right on down and got stuck right here. But this is really not a bad leave. It's kind of a tricky chip shot just because the lie is super suspect there some nasty like wet Bermuda. It just got done raining so the whole course is pretty soggy. This is one of those shots where you got a lot of options. I mean it's hard to kind of trust that if you play this normally it's just going to come out consistent. This is one of those shots that you tend to want to chop at just to make sure that it pops forward. It's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Like I won't, I won't chip this with the hill because I don't think it's going to come out very well out of this lie. So this is going to be one of those ones where you gotta, you gotta really, almost trap it. But when you trap it, you got to make sure that you're turning as you trap. If you just throw at it, the heel can hit first, and then the club turns over and it gasses long. So this will be a little bit of a stabbier motion, but I'll still make sure I rotate. Ooh, that looks pretty good. Get up there. All right, not bad. Probably six feet short. I like the contact there. Just didn't hit it hard enough. Got another breaker here. More like seven feet, I'd say. But uh, I'm definitely gonna have to play this one outside of the hole to get it to, to make this putt. Similar, actually, to the last putt I just made but this just opposite breaks. Got this one about three quarters of a cup out maybe. 
don't want to wishy-wash this putt, so I'm going to play a little bit less break than I probably should. So I'm, I'm planning on hitting this thing pretty firm. Oh, and I didn't hit it firm. That was stupid. I hit a good, I mean, it was a good uh, roll. I hit it on my line. Just forgot to hit it. That's a par. Okay, hole three here is 441 yards. Downhill. Not really any wind, but that fairway is not going to roll out after that rain. So if I can M6 this thing far enough to have a nice short iron in and give myself a good chance at birdie. a little late on that but I mean literally that was only 10 yards right of where I was aiming twist face let's go all right I got 127 the bad part about hitting it 10 yards right of where I was aiming is that I have a really bad angle. The ball's above my feet. Everything's calling for a draw here. The pin's to the right. So the tendency on this hole is to swing with the hill, overdraw it, lands left of the flag, spins left, and then you're stuck with like a 30 footer and you just, there's not much you can do about it. You don't really want to try, especially with short clubs, to hit cuts when the ball's above your feet. It really makes that really easy to shank it. I know it might straighten out the ball flight a little bit, but if you're trying to like really cut it, it really exposes that hosel. So, that being said, as I'm sure many of you know, you just choke up and try more, more or less to swing straight like on top of the ball. You're not trying to come across to cut it, and you're not swinging with the hill to hit a big power draw, but more just hit just on top of it. As long as, you're, you're, uh, as, long as you've choked up a little bit, it should come with a softer draw. So I got 127, I got a pitching wedge here. Full shot because it's, it's pretty cold. That looks pretty good. Ah! I think that spun off onto the fringe, but I hit that thing pure, so I'm happy with that swing. All right, I'm on a down slope. Super short-sided. I think the play is to bump it into the hill, but I don't have the club for it. I don't really want to walk back. So I'm actually going to try to hit something that's just going to hit it high and land like a sack of potatoes, land really soft. I won't be able to spin it off this lie, but I think I can just kind of pop one up. Get this thing in the front of your stance. Right hip's a little high. Oh, that's good. Oh, we'll stay on the slope. Oh my gosh. Okay, good. That gives you an idea of how close that false front is, man. Holy crap. That was a dime, though. I'm really happy with that. Sam, Sam Chan has been teaching me that shot, so thank you, Sammy Chi. Let's do a little worm cam for this two-footer here. As you can see, I got a different putter than the last video I was in. I have an even roll. It's got a sweet milled uh, face. You know, when I was a junior golfer, I used to putt with, Rife, with the Rife putter, and I really liked. This is the same person who made this putter, who made, who made Rife, and I just really like it. I, I, to be honest, I, I'm surprised I like it as much as I do. All right, there is a sweet par. On to the next hole, but first, Let's talk about the good news because 
I'm sure uh, many of you were wondering what could possibly make up for the atomic disaster that happened a week and a half ago with my sponsor. So last week I was playing in our Friday skins game that we have out here. And after the round, we were, you know, hanging out at the bar, having a couple drinks with the, the people who played. And a good friend of mine named Christian Chang is one of Xander Shoffley's best friends. And we got to talking about him and how certain events in his life that, that really propelled him to become the number six player in the world. I mean, he wasn't, he was really good in high school. Obviously, he's a D1 golfer, so he was, he was, good, in, he was good enough to play good golf. But he wasn't like an All-American in college or anything like that. And he just kind of really believed himself and really grinded. And now he's sixth in the world. It's pretty incredible. He's a local hero here in San Diego, obviously. But um, we got talking about that, and then we were talking about Q schools. And uh, Christian is playing in the Canadian Tour Q school down here at Carlton Oaks in March. So uh, so just about a month away or so. And then um, what a, a gentleman who plays with us who always ends up buying his drinks after the round asked me if I was playing in the Q school as well. And I told him I, I'm not. And, uh, and he asked me why, I told him I don't have any money. And even if I did have the, the sponsorship money still, we, were, we weren't planning on playing in anything like that until the web.com tour Q school. Just kind of stick around, play local tournaments, make sure I make more than what I'm putting in, and then use it all towards web.com tour. Because, you know, everything else is just kind of a little bit too expensive. And it's just, you know, my, my sponsor didn't really want to pay for that. Nonetheless... Uh, I told him I would go to China over Canada because China is less expensive uh, to travel around at, less expensive for the Q school. And my friend who I just mentioned, Sam Chen, is going to be playing out there. Um, and so he just looked at me and asked me, well, do you want to play? And I said, yeah, absolutely, I want to play. And he goes, well, how about I pay for it? I couldn't believe it. I thought he was, I thought he was uh, yanking my chain, and it turns out he was not. He said, yeah, no, I'll go to my car right now and get you your money and get yourself signed up. And I, I, I didn't believe it until he came back into the bar with $3,000 in cash to pay for my entry fee, my flight, and my hotel. And uh, the rest is all up to me. But, I mean, it's such a huge opportunity, one that I was not expecting at all and one that I expect to fully take advantage of. I believe myself completely. My game is as best as it's ever been. Um, and I can't wait to get over there. So I am leaving on the 26th of February, which is only a few weeks away, and playing and the Q School in Phuket, Thailand at Laguna Golf Club. Uh, I think I'm going to add a link below uh, to get, get you guys uh, looking at what, what the course looks like. There's a lot of water. It looks super interesting. Sam has played there before and says it's a, it's a short course that it looks more intimidating than it actually is. Uh, but, you know, this is just something I never would have foreseen happening. But with good surprises come more stresses. I obviously, like I said, don't have any really any extra money i think if i can if i get my card i can maybe make it to the first event and i feel like if i can get into the first three events uh it would be the biggest thing for me and which is why unfortunately i gotta ask you guys again please help me out i got a gofundme that's going to be under underneath this video click on the link even if you uh throw a couple dollars in it'll help uh, an insane amount it's not a uh, crazy expensive to travel out there but it's enough between the entry fee the play in the tournament the $450 membership fee, that all that kind of stuff adds up. So if I can get as much as I can, if you find that the videos that I've been posting, uh, if they help you enough, if it's worth a couple dollars or the videos that I post with Adam, which I will continue to post, is worth some, that would be great. Um, yeah, I'm always bummed to ask people for money, but at the same time, uh, you know, I, life is all about generosity and the generosity of others gives other people opportunities. So... This is a big one for me, and I hope to take you guys along for the ride. Uh, and uh, on the next hole, I'll keep talking about the perks of what's going to come from donating into my GoFundMe. I'm not going to leave you guys hanging. There's going to be more to come, but let's go PGA Tour China. Probably the prettiest par 3 on this golf course. And one of the hardest ones, probably. Uh, but it's 202 yards. The wind is kind of down and from the right. So I got myself a six iron. The sun's come out, so it's not as cold as it was a second ago. So I'm gonna actually hit like a little bit of a draw into this one to make sure I get there. It's downhill, I think down 10. So it should be playing around 192, which is a semi-stock six iron, I'd say, on normal weather. So I'm drawing it because I need to get that extra out of it because it is a little cold.
just right of the flag. Oh, it's a good one. It's about a uh, 12 feet or so. Caught it a little thin, but that worked out pretty well. Okay, I think I got more around around 20 feet here, which is always super good from 202 yards, you know. You give yourself an opportunity, a realistic birdie opportunity on any long par three, it's pretty sweet. I am going to 2019 rules this up and leave the pin in for this putt, mainly because you guys probably can't see the hole without it because it's in the shadow. But believe it or not, I've played in uh, two tournaments this year since the rule changed. I mean, myself included, but most of us out there, we leave the pin in a lot more often than you would think. Uh, you probably have noticed on TV that a lot of guys are really leaving them in around 30 feet. I'm the same way. I mean, I actually kind of really like it. It narrows your focus. It kind of like feels like a buffer. Similar to if like you ch like your uh, playing competitor chipped one to like three feet just past the hole and then you had a chip shot and you wanted to, you know, mentally you use his as a buffer in a way. If he can't get to it in time to mark it, you kind of go and hit. Uh, that does actually help, to be honest with you. Even though realistically you're probably not going to hit that ball, but in your head it kind of helps. So it's similar to that with the, it's similar to that when the pin is in from like 30 feet, you kind of feel like you have a buffer there. So this putt should just go a little bit to the left. This is a hard green to read. It never breaks as much as you think. Is that a good roll? I think if I hit that a smidge softer, that would have been good, but I really like that speed. I'm only a foot and a half, two feet past the hole. You know, a confident roll. Always take a par in those holes. On to the next one. Okay, I mentioned uh, some perks of donating. I mean, obviously, it's a uh, I can't give away too much because I don't have much to give, but I would like to put all the names of everyone who donates to me in a little drawing like I do did for my giveaways. And I'll be doing a giveaway for, for those particular people. So you get a choice between a brand new TaylorMade wedge or three dozen of the new TaylorMade golf balls that come out at the end of February. I'd love to give away a driver to be honest with you, but I don't have that many points left. And uh, the ones I do have left, I'd like to use obviously for equipment's sake for when I'm gone. Another thing that I'm definitely going to do is film a whole bunch. Uh, there are some laws in China. I think you're not allowed to film YouTube videos there, but we'll be stationed in Thailand and I'll be playing a lot of golf there. And I want to film leading up to the tournament, some preparation, you know, give you guys an idea what the course looks like, what I'm doing to prepare while I'm there. And I also want to just kind of vlog our travels. I'll be with Sam and it's just, uh, you know, living in traveling around in asia when you're not making much money is something that i think a lot of aspiring pros don't necessarily understand i had intended to do this the first time a couple years ago before they canceled the tour if i made it over there and i want to do that, that again especially because it's going to really give you guys an idea especially the, the aspirational tour pros of what it takes to kind of get there unless you you know you're a freak kind of like uh you know, the guys who come straight out of college, get a couple exemptions like Spieth, you know, and then win and do gnarly stuff like that. Most everybody has to get on web.com tour through different avenues or try to. They go to Canada, they go to Latin America, they go to China, they go to Asia, they go to Japan. And it's a really interesting lifestyle that I have not yet lived. But my friend Sam, who I'll be traveling with, has been doing it for years and years. And it's, uh, it's pretty fascinating to hear about all the places that he's been to. So I'm definitely going to chronicle that, film some course vlogs in a different country, which is going to be really cool. So look forward to that if you guys donate. And I really appreciate all the help. And I'm really excited to give away the wedge or the new balls because I'm assuming there's, gonna, there's not going to be that many people who donate. So you got good chances of getting those. And in the future, if I keep getting more stuff, I'm going to keep giving away to the ones who give to me. Again, everybody, thank you so much. Go find me link down below. All right, hole five, par five, 552 yards. This hole's changed a lot because on it's a split fairway and I never, never take it down the right, at least on any of the videos that I've been filming. 
and uh, I think maybe about a month ago they shaved off like another 30 yards of bushes on the right so now it's almost better to go to the right so I'm gonna take this thing over this tree and hopefully have a good chance at eagle if I hit this thing straight the wind has picked up so I'm really in a, a, a cold breeze right now perfect cut right down the middle. So I got 227, but I think it's uh, about 20 yards short uh, is the green, right around 205 to carry the front bunker. It's cold and in the wind, but I don't really have uh, much of a gap. My 200 would be too, too much. So I'm gonna hit a four iron here, make sure I just get to the front of the green, get myself an eagle putt. See what happens. If it gets there, that'd be awesome, but I don't know if it will on a day like today. Ball's above my feet here. We'll choke up just a smidge. Ah. Pushed it, but I, I hit it pure and just pushed it. Probably going to be in one of the front bunkers there. Alright, in the bunker here. As you can probably see on this camera, not many people have been raking this trap. I'm going to have a really bad, bad lie. But it could be a blessing in disguise because this is such a long bunker shot. It might just come out really, like, really knuckly and then just release to the hole. You got to make sure you keep your speed up on these ones. And by speed, I don't mean handle drag speed. That's a disaster in bunkers. It's a problem I used to have a lot. But you gotta, by speed, you get your speed in bunker shots basically from the top. It's almost like a cast motion. Throw the bounce at it and let it pop right on out. That's pretty good there. Maybe six and a half feet or so. A lot of sand in this bunker, so that helped like with the bad lie to just explode it on out. Okay, you never want to make a par when you're in the middle of the fairway from 200 some odd yards out on a par five, so it be a great putt to, that I definitely would normally really grind on to try to make. Judging from my bunker shot, this should just go a smidge to the right. There's a little bit of a hill here. Obviously, you got the mountain over here to the left, so you can kind of guess that it's going to go down to the low area to the right. It's just a question of how much. I've been hitting my lines really well today, so if I read it right, I feel like it's definitely going to go in. So I'm going to play this one left edge. And just try to trust it. Oh, that was sweet there. Good read, good birdie. We'll take it. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. That's about all that daylight has in store for me for today. I want to give you guys a special thanks for all of the many years of support. It means the world to me that I got a group of people out there who cares about my development leading up to hopefully the PGA Tour. Um, if you can find it in your hearts and in your wallets, click on the GoFundMe link below and donate. Every penny helps. Get yourself a chance to win a new wedge or three dozen of the new tailor-made TP5 or TP5X golf balls that come out at the end of this month. Uh, again, everybody means the world. And I want you, along with me, to always keep on grinding. Let's go!